Okay. Let's see if we are live. It looks like we might be. Hello, hello. Welcome to the conversation. MKJ here and my wonderful co-host, Peter Lasoski. Am I here or here? <laughs> I don't know. Where am I? Ah, yeah, that way. I think you're that way. Up and I'm down. <laughs> Like we might be. I got to shut my own volume off. Stop. Stop. We don't get feedback. There it is. Now I stopped it. Yay. All right. Yes. Let's do this thing. I, uh, wow. We get to chat about our favorite subject again, right, Peter? We get to chat about being relatable and everything that means. Um, and yeah. that's what we're going to, we're going to chat about today. So, um, before we get into this, let me go ahead and start sharing my screen so that I can bring up the details of what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. And there we go. You can, uh, see my screen. Yes, I can. We're good to go. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loading. Well, Almost, yeah. There we go. <clears throat> I can get it back to the beginning. There we go. Now we're ready to rock and roll. All right. So this is what we're going to talk about. How to use video to scale relationships and revenue, obviously, more important, without joining algorithm zombies. And we're going to talk about what that means. It really is a, a code to being relatable. Uh, so you ready to rock? Yes, I am. We're gonna we're gonna uh, get through the uh, zombie apocalypse here, <laughs> the algorithm apocalypse. <laughs> That's what it feels like, like. I was yeah. that. Uh, what is that? That show, the the TV show, where they had all those zombies on them. Absolutely. Uh, I uh, what was it called? It was the uh, the the actual game. Um, it was named after the game. And uh, yeah, I, I disagree. I'm just going to say it right now. I disagree with the way that ended, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> it, they'll, come, <laughs> they'll come out with the next uh, the next season, I'm sure, pretty soon. And then they'll uh, tell me why I'm wrong. But anyway, this and you know is... Carl was a digital native. So, you know, hey. <laughs> See? We'll there talk you go. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. how, how can you be relatable? This is what we're going to share today. And uh, welcome to you if you're here, because this is a discussion. This isn't just us preaching. We are not experts in this field. We've been doing this for maybe a little bit longer than some, but we need uh, others like us to contribute to this conversation. So if that's you, I sincerely hope you join us and uh, chat about how uh, what it means to be relatable. So These are the the things we're going to cover today briefly. The seven undeniable truths of an online business, native digitals versus native analogs, just like uh, Peter just mentioned about native digital, social chasing and what that means, and also the algorithm zombie idea that we mentioned, the tipping point, a shift that has already happened, why revenue rises with human connections and relationships, and all of that is encapsulated in how relatable you are in your business, what your relatable score is. So uh, any, any other ideas to add to that? No, I, I think that's a, that's a good start. There's a lot to, lot to cover here. I know a lot of these people are going to be drinking from, from a fire hose, but that's okay. So we're going to just take it piece by piece here, which will be good. Please just relax. It's okay. Um, we're just going to dive one, one piece by one piece. And this is the, the uh, and basically this is not a webinar. It's a discussion, as I mentioned. There's no like perfect webinar formula. There's no, no um, you know, price comparison slides and closing slides and all that. We need to chat because of exactly what is on your screen right now. Once you see what we're going to share with you, uh, you can't unsee it. You will actually see it everywhere, right? Yes, I agree. Actually, I looked this up because I was interested, Mary, at finding out the origins of once you see this, you can't unsee it. Yeah. And actually, that was uh, that came out of a play by William Shakespeare called The Tempest. It was in the, the, the kind of the quasi t- interpretation of that translation. So in his day, there was the same thing as it is today with now with technology and where we're going. 
Yeah. Well, we, we definitely, uh, we know that because we've, like I said, been in this for a little bit and we, we can't unsee it everywhere we go. <laughs> All right. So who's this for? Bre- who's this not for? Briefly, if you need someone else's proven formula or step-by-step uh, funnel created for you, so you just plug in your name and everything works, this is not for you. If you want somebody to show you the magic pill for viral content and social media posting, this is not what we're going to talk about. If you're looking for that 4% uh, of buyers to get to the bottom of your funnel and just buy, this is also not for you. And I'm going to do these other two things, but I know Peter has something to talk about in that one. Uh, Digital only tools so you can just be behind the scenes and just make money uh, in your sleep, quote unquote. And again, the step-by-step how-to training, this is not what we're going to discuss today. We're going to be much higher level than that. We're going to give you a framework, but not a step-by-step formula. So take it away, Peter. What do you mean by 4% conversions? Well, 4% is actually market to, uh, we have a lot of numbers and studies. If you guys are interested, you can always reach out and and talk to us about this. But typically a funnel, any one-way funnel that you're putting industry average, market to did a, they did a thousand B2B um, funnels and they found out that actually the conversion is less than that. It's around 1.9%. We were being generous at four, but it's one of these things where you, the way I look at it is, Okay, so if you get 4% to convert, they become your customers. The other 96%, now you're pestering them with email. So overall, and all these bullet points, Mary, I always just say, say no to the quo. It's time to stop the status quo because status quo is really doing a lot of damage to the people that you're not hearing from. You're only hearing from those that have used their wallet to buy, but there's a whole bunch of people that you haven't heard from that basically were annoying and we need to stop doing some of those things. And we have some solutions for you on how you could do that today. Absolutely. So let's do the converse of that. Who who was going to benefit from what we're going to talk about today? And again, I sincerely hope you join us in the discussion. We are live on YouTube. So if you have any comments you'd like to share, um, you know, this, uh, this particular um, conversation, I hope you do. So who's this for? Um, entrepreneurs who are embracing the future. And that comes with a certain amount of uncertainty, but we'll talk about that. Business owners who are tired of selling to that 4% Peter just outlined. Uh, And people who are tired of being controlled by the social algorithms. That's what I term algorithm zombies. It's like all we do is uh, change direction based on what the algorithms, algorithms tell us to do. And we aren't really bringing ourselves to that conversation. We are just a zombie waiting for the next algorithm to change so that we can hopefully chase it and uh, be the top. Entrepreneurs, if you're growing a movement, please listen, because we're going to definitely help you with that. And if you're ready, if you're tired of those funnels, you're tired of just being pushed to the bottom of a, a funnel and and really bugged to death, Uh, before you finally, until you finally just give up, then definitely you might want to listen up. Now, a little about us. Uh, Peter, go ahead and then I'll chat about who I am. Yeah, just real quick. I've been doing um, product development for north of 30 years now. I've been on a lot of different projects. Uh, I run a software company that Mary and I are involved in called iProleo. And we have this product out now called Relatable. And, you know, I look at innovation as um, a contrarian way to think, but putting the pieces together to say, hey, what's really going on in the world today? I've, you know, run divisions for little companies called the that you might know, Nike, Hewlett Packard, Verifone, um, traveled all over the world, saw a lot of commonalities, uh, have a few patents, but, you know, the whole point really is about how, how do we create things for people that are helpful to them, that help move them forward in away from the status quo? Because when you're in the status quo, you're in the noise, right? And so we're trying to help people to move away from the noise. And now, Mary, uh, everything on the internet, and we're going to talk about this in great detail, is moving towards this interaction and community and so this is something we find near and dear to our hearts, and that's what we want to talk about today. Absolutely. Uh, Peter and I have known each other since about 2017, I think. And um, 
you know, we've been kind of in and out of each other's worlds. I, I was participating in uh, Peter's last uh, development that he did called Openless App and was really excited about that. And I am equally, if not more, excited about Relatable. And the reason is because uh, I've been in online business since 2003, started uh, the first maternity store online. And ever since then, I have been bitten by what's next. Um, and like Peter says, what else is possible? Uh, I just can't shake that feeling. I can't shake that excitement for the possibility of what we have in front of us. Um, so that's why I'm here. And everything I've done is in conversation, conversational design, designing a conversation so that people understand the tech and they understand the marketing and they understand what's in it for them so that we speak that correct language and all of that supports community and a movement. So quickly, that's uh, the the down and dirty about who the heck this woman is on your screen. Um, let's go uh, to that movement. So uh, Peter, do you want to kind of go through that a little bit since it is the movement of iProleo and specifically relatable, how does category, framework, tool, content, community, all of that fit into a movement? Yeah. So in any of this stuff, you know, the big point to make here is we're not creating something that's the next new shiny penny for you to use. It's here today, gone tomorrow. What we're, you know, movements are things in the world that are timeless, that they they span the test of time. Um, and so when we came, you know, forward with Relatable, I wanted to look at it. My company, iProleo, is Latin for I Engage. And we're all about creating human connected technologies. Uh, so when we looked at this, the first thing category is really about how do you how do you be different, Mary? How do you do things that aren't just better? I, I'm not about building a better mousetrap. I'm about looking at the mega trends that are going on in the world and saying, okay, what is going on here? It's in the status quo. What are some of the really uh, things that need to be that there's problems that maybe people when you point them out and we're going to point out a few problems that I think people are going to go wow I never thought about it that way right but our category is interactive video relationships because video everybody's on their phone that's you know we're going to get to that and everybody's watching videos these days and so but it's not just about watching it's about how do we create relationships because as human beings we want to have relationships so the next thing was well okay if we're going to do that and have uh, something that does interactive video relationships, how do you think about it? That's the framework. The relatable framework is how do you be relatable? And so just like, you know, you guys all, you know, we all know it, like when you want to go uh, search for something, you Google it, right? We're working towards us being a verb. When you want to create relationships, you be relatable, right? So that's the framework. I wrote a book on it. Um, it's available to people that use our tool. Then we have the tool relatable which is an interactive video relationships tool. It's the first one in the world that you can do on your phone. You can build on your phone, people view on their phone. So basically it's anytime, anywhere. You can do this walk into a coffee shop, in a cab, in an airport, wherever you're at, you can create these relatables to interact with your audience or your customer base or your advocates. And then, you know, this is about our content, right? How do we develop content and educate people and give them actual use cases of how to be relatable and how to build these things. And then the last thing is our community. And we're going to talk about that later on in the slides. We have a, a I think a pretty, Mary and I have, I think we have a pretty cool name for it. And it's for all of us contrarian thinkers out there. But again, I can't stress enough. This is not contrarian for the sake of contrarian. This is contrarian for the sake of the fundamental timeless connections. And how do we use connect to technology to connect with that timelessness. So when you use Relatable, you're going to be using it for the rest of your time in business. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I have nothing else to add to that except join us, please. We need other contrarian thinkers. <laughs> Otherwise, we're out here on our own feeling like we're like- Well, we're we our movement and uh, we're working on that. So we'll, <laughs> we'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. So let's go go through these seven undeniable truths. And I think once we say them, you will agree that they are undeniable, unwavering, whatever other word like that you need to say. Connectivity is a fundamental right. The world is connected and we can't imagine not being connected. Everyone is on their phone. Absolutely. Information is at our fingertips on our phone. 
everyone is watching or listening instead of reading. And we'll talk about that in just a second and get into detail as to why we think that is, why we think that's a truth. Short form video is the future of content consumption. The rise of podcasts and audiobooks are, uh, again, undeniable. And we'll also talk about why. And then this all leads to the requirement for content to be personalized and niche focused. Now, Peter, take me through some of those, because I know some of them are self-explanatory, but there are a few where you may need to get into a little more detail, right? Yeah, well, just to support, I mean, everybody knows when the internet came around in 1990, that's the connectivity, right? We wouldn't, we can never go back. We can only only go forward. 96% of the people in the world of 8 billion people have a cell phone now. So it's basically most people, that's their only computing device. We have information uh, on these phones and anything we want to find out, we could look. And now with the advent of artificial intelligence, it just makes it that much easier and faster. Uh, the watching or listening, um, really people nowadays, especially uh, the people born post-internet, they're more about watching videos and listening to you know podcasts and things like that. So they're not really, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever heard of the, the term TLDR, too long, didn't read. They created that. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you look at the last five-year period, Mary, there's been over 100% growth in video consumed and only a 17, 17% growth in blogs. And so um, it's kind of interesting, you know, what you see where it's just been breakaway growth there. Short form, obviously, less attention spans. And so, um, you know, the shorter videos are becoming popular or breaking things into shorter chunks. Podcasts are huge. I mean, you know, we could talk about that. Uh, but that's another one where, uh, especially people post internet, they're not reading books, they're listening to podcasts, they're, you know, they're doing audio. And then this is the biggie, the personalized niche content, Mary, is this is about um, how do you create this interaction, interactivity with people? This is where people are going. Uh, and you no, know, you can be pre internet era like Mary and I, but you can still have this mindset of like, as a business person, how can I create personalized and niche content? Um, I will tell you this, just as a statistic, Mary, and for all you guys that are listening out there, uh, Bright Cove did a study and they uh, they looked at a, a billion video views. And do you know what they found out? They found out interactive video, like what we're creating with Relatable, which takes it even a step further for the better, creates a 200%, up to 200% increase in in engagement and conversion, not just engagement, but conversion into a customer. So this is where things are at these days. And really it's based on things that are timeless. It's based on building relationships, building human connections. That's what people are looking for these days, not being shoved through an email marketing uh, funnel or a one-way funnel. Um, people are kind of done with that now. Kind of. Yeah, I'm I'm done. <laughs> And I'm and my business has the name funnels in it. Yes. So, I was looking at that. I thought you better change your email address. No, I know I've got another one, but yeah, I do. All right. So let's, uh, I know we've dropped this, uh, this term a few times, or you've dropped this t- term a few times, native digitals, and uh, we're going to go into native analogs as well. But this, these are groups of people. And I love what Peter said. These two groups of people are creating a pretty gigantic clash online uh, because there's analogs, you know, before the internet and digitals uh, since the internet. Why don't you go into a few more details than that for me? Yeah. So you have pre-internet, post-internet. Um, native analogs are all of us that, you know, it's not an ageism thing, but typically if you look at, you know, Tim Berners-Lee invented the internet about 1990. So that puts uh, anybody 35 and older as a native analog, anybody 35 and younger as a native digital. Okay. But it's not so much the ageism thing. It's the native analogs. They look at, we're about physical reality and we utilize the internet for different types of things, but it is not, it's an extension of our physical reality. Native digitals look at it differently. They look at things in the digital world as that's their primary reality And they're kind of tourists in the physical world. If you don't believe me and you have kids, a lot of the native digitals, they'll game and they talk to their friends on Discord all over the world. They're great uh, friends with each other, but they've never met them. 
But that's how native digitals operate. Native digitals, they won't come to your door and knock on the door and go, hey, I'm here like we would as analogs. They sit there and text in their car and go, hey, I'm here, right? That's how they operate. They just, the, it's the way they perceive and experience reality is different than the way we do. Um, now, you know, the, the important thing about this is um, analogs, because they were around when the internet was created, analogs created all the rules for the internet, all the models, the ads, the email marketing, the funnels, the SEO, everything that you see today, which we call status quo, we say no to the quo is it's because it's it's what it's what all the analogs created. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's that's the way it is. But native digitals, they're more than half the population of the world now, Mary. They're looking not for that. In fact, they they find analog marketing and models, uh, they reject them and they find them irrelevant. They're looking for interaction and community. So like I said, as an analog, it doesn't mean that you are now out of the club. It just means there's a different way of doing business, a different way of interacting and working towards interaction and community, which is what's embraced by native digitals is really where it's at and where it's going to be for many, many years to come. You have a, you're on mute, Mary. Oh. Thank you. Yes. And it's not just where it's going to be. It's actually the, the change. It is what it will be no matter what, uh, wherever we're headed. Um, we need to communicate this new way now. Um, so you talked about analogs, you talked about the, the digitals, but talk about yesterday's filters, the, uh, all the, and this is really the reason that, uh, I'm I'm kind of going not necessarily against funnels, but I'm not embracing them anymore and using them as a one-way uh, slide, basically, is the way it feels, a slide down into a purchase. Yeah. So what filters are you talking about? Well, the filters of, you know, yesterday's filters, like what I was talking about is, you know, an uh, analogs watch TV, or we did, even if it's streaming, digitals watch videos. In fact, if you have uh, digital in your presence, they're going to be over there watching YouTube videos on their phone or, or different videos. They're not necessarily going to sit down in front of a TV and watch a TV show, even though we can watch TV shows anytime, anywhere now. Um, that's just how they are. And so th the analogs, you know, we looked at the world and said, well, OK, we came from a time of watching TV, listening to radio, um, all of these, you know, having ads. And so all these yesterday filters, this is why you see what's going on on the internet. We have ad after ad after ad. We have free, but on YouTube, you have to wait for five seconds before you're waiting with your finger to tap off of it, unless you pay for it. And then even then you have ads. Um, so, you know, the models and the things that the analogs were used to, they just brought over to the internet and say, hey, let's plop it on here because we can make some good money and you know, there's good businesses to be had. Um, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but even with SEO, you look at, you know, Google did a great job of creating a search engine, but then they created what's called page one. So now if you pay a company to do your SEO, you get to be up on page one with not only the companies that are advertising they are paying money there, but nine other companies you get to compete with. And I know this to be true because, Mary, you know, a few years ago, I had a large wellness center. And we did, one of the things we did was massage. So we were up there. So guess what? We got to compete with nine other companies and everything being equal as consumers, what do we do? We look for the lowest price. So it is a race to the bottom on price and you're always competing on price. You can't run a business that way profitably, right? Yeah. So these are the, these are the yesterday filters that you really have to think about and go, do I really want to be totally all in 100% in that status quo and stay in that status quo? Or do I want to play my game? I'll be in there a little bit, but I'm going to jump out as soon as I can and get them into my interactive environment and my community. Yeah. And I, the only thing I really want to add to that is you, so many people that possibly can hear our voice, will say, okay, great, that's wonderful, uh, but how am I going to get them to buy? And their concept is still that fear of missing out. I've got to make them have FOMO that they have to have this, or I've got the false, um, you know, scarcity, only five left. We're on the internet, people. There's way more than five left. There's no, you know, it's not like your digital course only has five options available. 
that's baloney, right? So those kinds of tactics have been used forever. So instead of bringing those tactics with you into, let's say, a framework of relatable and trying to build relationships, but yet you're still using those old filters, you really need to be real, not using those outdated methods that we all know about, we are all bothered by and just can can see them a mile away and we hate them. But yet we say, oh, but but you know what? It's what we have to do. Like the old pop-ups on websites. Oh, but you know what? It gives us it gives us stats. It gives us numbers. So we have to use it. So we're going to annoy everyone just to be able to use that and say our numbers went up. Those are the things we're talking about when we say the, the native analog filters. We don't need to use those anymore. Let's be real with people. Let's actually build relationships instead of trying to manipulate them to buy. And you know, Mary, the the numbers, if you look, because we've done a lot of research and looked at different studies and things like that, there's a study out there, by the way, guys, on the seven, uh, uh, you know, undeniable, that's in our sub stack, you can go over and look for Be Relatable. I just am writing a piece on this whole thing with, uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it with native analogs and digitals, and that's gonna be over a sub stack, you can read it there. But the point I want to bring up, Mary, is one of the studies I read now, this goes exactly why you don't, you know, no to the quote, why you want to be against the status quo. Do you realize that over 70% of the people, they don't necessarily want to talk to a company or want to experience a brand. They want to have direct interaction with you as the CEO or business owner in a video. And they're more likely to buy and more likely to engage if you do that. 70%. So these are not things that, oh, they're coming. This stuff is already here. And it's one of these things of you can choose to continue to stay on the hamster wheel, do your ads, all the stuff you're doing. I'm not saying don't go up to the fishing holes because that's where the traffic is. But I'm what I'm saying is get off, get them the viewers, not the because we don't call them users. Get the viewers off those fishing holes and into your interactive environments and community as quickly as you can, because then you can build a relationship. You cannot do that on social platforms. 100%. So this leads us into, do we all have Stockholm syndrome or something similar and, you know, lighter version, obviously. Um, And what does that mean? And we'll go into that in a second. But these are the things that kind of, we just go along with, like I mentioned a minute ago, we, we don't like it, but we just go along with it because we think this is the way it has to be because there's no other way. Well, here we're here to tell you there is definitely another way. And this is exactly what we're outlining. So are you a willing algorithm zombie just chasing the algorithms? Do you refer to your customers or your audience as users? And we'll talk about why that you might want to do, might not want to do that. Uh, are you a servant to the SEO? Uh, again, paying for the privilege of being listed right alongside nine of your closest competitors uh, and being put down to the bottom of price comparison. Do you produce empty calorie content? Do you use stranger marketing? And do you accept that role as a marketing pusher? And we're going to go into these details, at least these last four in detail. But tell me more about Stockholm Syndrome and why we are using that term, Peter. Yeah, Stockholm Syndrome, uh, that was another study that was done, but basically it came out of like uh, people who are, and this is why it's 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 a harsh analogy, but it's kind of true. People who are uh, kidnappers or terrorists, they the captors eventually over time have an affinity towards their captor. And so this goes with the status quo, right? It's 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 a thing that happens in the brain, but basically it's, you know, we're all sitting here thinking that, okay, well, you know, what's an algorithm zombie? Well, here's a good example. If you're on LinkedIn, all the rage now is carousels. If you don't do carousels, you're not going to be seen as much as if you do regular posts. Well, guess what? Now it's like, as a zombie, it's like, okay, I got to go do carousels. And everybody's talking about carousels. Why? Because LinkedIn is juicing the algorithm to make your stuff be seen more by using the carousels. And this happens on Google. It happens on all social platforms. This is why Mary's calling an algorithm zombie. If you're willing to go along with that, well, okay, that's good. You can do that to get to be seen more. All I'm saying is be smarter than their game. You can play their game a little bit, but get off their game. Don't continue just to chase and chase and chase up there um, with that. So that's that's Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, definitely. And this is this speaks to the users uh, comment that we just made. 
There are only two industries that call their customers users, illegal drugs and software. And this is by Edward Tuft. Uh, and he made that statement in the movie or the documentary, The Social Dilemma. Uh, if you haven't seen that, highly recommend it. Um, not that we all have to just reject all social media and change everything. You obviously, each of us has our own tolerance and uh, desires and especially ways to raise our kids. But the whole internet is designed this way. The people who created uh, these technologies themselves talk about it as users, just like the illegal drug trade. So we are looking at that and going, okay, again, are we just going to go along with the status quo? Or are we going to say no to the quo? And are we going to go contrary to that and say, no, we don't have to use call them users. We can call them relationships. We call them people for crime and sakes. We can call them viewers. We don't have to call them users. And, you know, just to add to that too, Mary, like I said before to everybody that's watching here, I'm not, you know, I, you guys, when you get, you get our tool relatable, you get the book for free. I wrote a whole, it's almost a 200 page book in there. I talk about exactly how to use fishing holes. How do you go up to social media and use it to your advantage to bring people in to your relatable environment and start building that relationship from audience to customer, to customer, to advocate. Right. And this is exactly what we're doing in our company. And you can do the same thing, no matter what type of business you are. Now, I talked about that term social chaser, and again, we're going to go into these details of SEO servant and all of that, but that's that kind of, uh, you take the algorithm zombie and you combine it with a social chaser, which again, I cop to being over the last several years, uh, but no more. And you, the definitions, the terms we use to identify ourselves when we are playing this role is... Uh, really related to how we treat our audience and how we feel we need to relate in order to be on social media and get the leads and do all those things. If you stay on social media, if you are constantly um, just posting all the vanilla content, and we'll go over that in a second, and you're chasing the algorithm zombie, you're an algorithm zombie, then you are basically doing this these behaviors Instead of getting your audience off of social media, getting them off of uh, Google and whatever search you use, and actually engaging and interacting with them. So let's get into the details of what these are. Social SEO servant. 28% of clicks if you're on page one of Google. That really is all that equates to. But, and, but Mary, that's position one of page one. Yes. <laughs> the rest get less. <laughs> so, yes, exactly. Wow. That's yeah. if you're number one. Yes. And basically, you're just chasing that algorithm. Um, it, it compares, it gets you into a comparison um, competition with your actual competitors. You're not building relationships or community. You're just a commodity. And again, all of this just to have the privilege of being compared to your nine closest competitors. Anything you want to add to that? The only thing I want to add is the tactic here is you can go ahead. I'm not, we're not saying don't be on page one of Google. We're, we're doing the same thing. But you want to create a hook that's different. Your statement up there that's going to get people to stop in their tracks and go, hmm, this might be something interesting that I want to check out, right? To For them to tap on it on their phone or click on it on their computer. And then that brings them into your environment, right? So this is a traffic source. Traffic sources are good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just make your, your hook compelling enough and talk about what's different in your business from all the other nine competitors you have there to bring them into your relatable interactive environment. Because once they're in and they're engaging, there's all kinds of statistics, guys, that show that they're going to engage, they're going to connect, and they're going to convert at a much higher rate than they would if they just went to a website page. Absolutely. All right. So that's SEO servant. Whoops. Empty calorie content. Now that one is something, again, if we go back to one of the first slides where when you see this, you'll see it everywhere. <laughs> Empty calorie content is pretty much everywhere. 
Uh, it's designed just for, again, the social chasing. And what you're chasing in social media is likes, hearts, hand claps, celebrations, all those little uh, wonderful emojis that uh, all the social media platforms want us to uh, to use to show our support for a particular post. That's all you're doing is chasing that kind of engagement. It's not really substantive uh, or something that your audience can chew on, so to speak. Um, it's just like all the generative AI content. So in other words, generative AI finds content on the internet. And if we just use generative AI to create our content and we don't make it personalized and niche, all we're doing is contributing to that. Uh, and we don't want to do that. It doesn't stop the scroll and it doesn't personally engage with people and make them think. And all it is, is searching for eyeballs, Get trying to get, again, those those uh, proxy metrics, we used to call them vanity, vanity metrics. They're called proxy metrics. Some of them are important. We obviously need numbers. We are all in business. We need to pay attention to numbers, but we're not just driven by these metrics. As a quasi success ratio, We it won't show us that success because we're not actually building relationships with people who actually care about what we have to say. So anything else about empty calories? Uh, you know, the only thing to add, Mary, and, you know, you and I, we talked about this. In fact, um, guys, this goes along with once you see it, you can't unsee it. So, uh, you know, I was talking to Mary about this the other day, which is we actually have what we call, in fact, I'm going to share this on Substack. You can read about this and learn about what to do. So there's in in the way I think about this and you're going to once I share this with you, go out to LinkedIn, go out to Instagram, go out to Twitter you're going to see this everywhere. So empty calorie content that I look at it as equations, right? So, cause I'm an engineer. So empty calorie content is like what Mary said. It's a lot of, it's designed for likes, hearts. It's like the feel good stuff. You're going to see people on, on LinkedIn and they're going to have posts like, Hey, uh, if you want to have the nine tips for peace of mind, go do this. Right. And they have a carousel on it. Right. It, it's like, that's nice, but there's not a lot of substance to it. But there are people out there, you, you guys know them, they're big business people, and they do a lot of this empty calorie content. Everybody goes, woohoo. But at the end of the day, what? how does it really help you build your business and bring in more revenue, uh, have long-term customer relationships, more profitability? Not a lot. Mm -hmm. Then the next one that we just have developed is what we call status quo content. And you're going to see this up there. There's people all over LinkedIn and they, they talk about, hey, go ahead, you do this post and then you take them to your profile and the link and then they sign up with the email. And then from the email, you send them to a landing page and they go through this and now you're going to get them into your little $25 course or whatever. Again, it's a bunch of stranger content. There was a guy up there, was, Mary, I was telling you about this the other day. He's a younger kid. He's a native digital, but he was bragging about how he did all this and he got a 0.3% conversion. That's three out of a thousand. And he thought that was good. Guys, I'm telling you, you can do way better with interactive relationship, uh, video relationships. But the third one is what Mary and I use. Uh, almost all the majority of our content, our equation is called breakthrough uh, uh, content, right? And that's really looking at it and saying, Okay, what is the hook that's going to get them to stop? But I want to pose a problem that's different, kind of like what we talked about with, do you realize what you're doing in SEO? You're competing with nine other companies and you're paying for the privilege of doing that. We're getting a lot of feedback from people who are watching this and other people where Mary's posting, they're going, I never thought about it that way. That's breakthrough content. So you're giving that and say, okay, now here's the pain point that is affecting you if you if you continue to do this right and then we then we give a solution and then a call to action which is hey join us in our framework in our movement in our community uh and use our tool right so we you know it's the world needs more breakthrough content and less status quo and certainly less empty calorie content Absolutely. And I just want to add one more thing to this, uh, because I know some of the people that are uh, listening to our voice right now, um, when you have, let's see, you, you still have to sell something. So you're going to sell um, a standard thing. You're going to sell a particular software product. You're going to sell a particular consulting service. You're going to sell your agency solution, whatever that is. It's all human content that we've all done many times before. So instead of going and just selling your agency the way everyone has always sold agency services, you need to have something different. You need to have a different solution, a different hook. And that different comes from you. 
you are the one that makes it different. My agency and my experience and the way I look at clients and their their issues and try and help them solve those issues, that's different from anyone else's. So when I bring myself into this and actually develop relationships with people who are like me, I don't create empty calorie content. I create content that's specific to the niche and personalized to me and others who are like me. That's how you can be relatable while still selling a service that everyone else sells and be different and stand out with that hook Peter mentioned and all the other parts of this breakthrough content. So just a little tip in how we can take the standard things that we all have to do and make them relatable and build a business with them. All right, stranger marketing. Again, very similar to what we've been talking about, but we're ta- we're looking at more of this arm's length content. So like the funnels, like the, the uh, webinars, the uh, challenges, all those things that are automated, we're going to look at Um, I call them slick aware. We are all slick aware. We're aware of of the slick solutions that that are just saying the same things that everyone else is saying, but we're adding a a good old salesy tactic to it. It's focused on my brand and who I am and why I'm so important, not about who I am and how I relate to my audience. I'm here only to sell when I'm I'm using stranger marketing. I keep the audience at arm's length. And I want, Peter, I want you to talk about that for a sec. But uh, numbers also go along with that keeping at arm's length. And it really is just pushing people to the bottom of the funnel. So talk about what what you mean by arm's length, because that was your your coined term. Yeah, well, it's always bothered me because, you know, today part of the status quo is, in fact, there's somebody that's coming out, they have a new program. And they're talking about how it's going to make a bunch of money for your business, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's good. That's a good benefit. But the intent really was your customer is just a wallet. They're not a relationship. And the the thing that with this arm's length marketing is you can go collect hundreds of thousands of emails and you can push them. The technology is there. You can use MailChimp, uh, ConvertKit, uh, Drip. We use Drip. You can do whatever you want to do. But the thing is, you don't know them and they don't know you. And this is the point that the native digital are saying enough. We want to know you. We want to be in interaction with you and we want community with you. And that's where the world has already gone there because over half the world is native digital now. So it's more important to build relationships. Now, the thing is, Mary, I would love to go out with every customer of ours and have a cup of coffee at Starbucks with them. But guys, you know, as business owners, that's very time consuming. And if you got a lot of customers, that's impossible to do. So that was one of the challenges we said, well, okay, how do we create relationships with people, but you do it at scale? Okay. That's where we came up with interactive video relationships and with Relatable because you can have, in fact, here's the thing, guys, you can have evergreen interactives where you have a whole experience. And by the way, the, the viewer controls their the experience, not the other way around, where it's like in funnels where they're controlling the experience. But what I would like people to do, we have artificial intelligence to help you create scripts when you start. But what I want you to do over time is in the relatable, just do daily relatables. I don't care if you're walking down the street, you're sitting and having a cup of coffee. It's just like, it's like a continual fireside chat and you're having these interactions. But the cool thing, Mary, is, the people uh, that you're touching, they can see you, they can hear you. Video is a rich experience. And then you're asking them, you might just say, hey, I just talked about this for a couple minutes. I'd like to get your input on it. What do you think, right? That builds interaction and it builds community because now they're interacting. And by the way, you can take that because we have analytics built in Relatable and go, okay, well, wow, all these people reacted this way. So now I'm going to do another daily relatable the next day on this because, and I'm going to tell them, hey, oh, you guys really voted this way. So let me talk about that. So this whole idea of creating these relationships and getting these relationships, and again, there is all kinds of statistics and studies that when you create interaction and you build these video relationships, you are going to get conversions on the other end. Why? It's the old adage, right, Mary? People like to do business with people they like, know, and trust. That is timeless. It's always been that way. 
Yes. Yes. And now some people might be thinking, okay, well, that's fine. Well, that's no different from a YouTube short or a TikTok video or something like that. I can just do that. I can just do a daily video and put it up online and let people interact with it. But no, they don't interact with it. They have comments. Even if you're live on TikTok or live on YouTube or whatever, they'll, they might have some comments, but the relationship isn't built because you aren't actually getting their interaction with the content and allowing them to take the next step with the content. So if you're talking about a daily relatable and you're saying, okay, like I went down to the beach and I was ta- filmed a video about the waves and how the, the waves are continuous, but yet different. So they're consistent and they make changes consistently, but each wave is different from the other. So it doesn't mean we have to do things the exact same way each time. So if that were going to be a relatable video rather than just a TikTok video, I would put that into relatable and I would ask someone, I would ask a question at a particular part of that video and say, what do you think? What in your life is consistent, but you look at it differently or you do it differently each time? Share that with me, please. And then a a button would pop up or a text box would pop up and people could type in their personalized answer. And then from that, have a different relationship with my content, a different adventure with the next piece of content. That's what's different from just doing a TikTok video or a YouTube short versus a relatable. Yeah, it's it's interactive. It's not passive. And to take it one step further, Mary, what we did, because this really bugged me. It's like, I looked at all the interactive software packages that are out there and they're the same way. They take you through a one way experience. And that's kind of like in the human world of going, okay, I really like this person. I want to go out on a date with them. And at the end of the date, I'm going to say, want to get married? I mean, we don't do that as human beings. We get to know, we ask questions, right? So what we did in Relatable in the framework and the software tool, we're the only ones in the world where you can, you can build relationships. If someone pauses and watches, you can re-engage them right back to the time code where they paused. Why did we do that? Not to pester people, but people have a life. They had a meeting to go to. There was a dinner. Their baby was crying. Something happened and they really, and we all have had videos we wanted to watch and we don't want to start over at the beginning so we can re-engage. The other thing we can do is, like you said, Mary, is based on how people are answering your questions, you can give them other content that is personal and relevant to them. That was the seventh truth. People want personalized niche content to them. Well, you can do that with Relatable and re-engage them back with other content that they said they wanted, not what you wanted to shove down their throat. And that's <laughs> what makes it, that's what, that's what interactive video relationships are all about. That's what Relatable can do. Absolutely. And this, again, drives it home to what the current state of marketing really is. Um, again, the word pusher is a, you know, you can you can look at it as a drug-related content or if you're just pushing people through. But it, it really is. We're just pushing things down people's throats and trying to get them to a particular solution that we think is most important and we just want them to buy it. So funnels, they're, they don't build relationships with customers or with consumers. They capture consumers. They are something we do to consumers, not with them. It's all about, again, the brand and not about the relationship or the actual customer and what they need. It's a one-way experience to the bottom. You either buy or you don't. And all the people who don't get bothered by the next statement, which is OTOs, upsells, downsells, discounts, all those things just to recoup whatever it cost us to get that person in that funnel. Again, that numbers game. We have to pay for a certain amount, whether it's organic and time or actual money with ads, pay them to get into the funnel. So we have to maximize whatever we can get out of the people who actually buy to make up for that cost, whichever it was. And again, it's something we do to customers to make money. You know, Mary, one of the things that uh, fourth point, the one-time offers, upsells, downsells, first of all, we can sniff out BS right away. It's like people say, (laughs) it's one-time offer. It's never going to happen again. It's like, then you see it like two weeks later, two months later, and you go, well, (laughs) they didn't tell the truth, right? Right. But I just looked this up. I looked it up again today because I was thinking about this with the one-time offers. And I want to share this with you guys. Do you know ad costs in Google over the last five years have gone up over 40%? Now, in Facebook, I, I know it's gone up. The reason why is because with our wellness center, there got to a time I couldn't afford to do ads. They were too expensive. But I didn't want to take them through these offers, upsells, downsells, because that just annoys people. Yeah, okay, you're going to get a percentage. And yes, 
you know, there's people that teach that to recoup your ad costs, do this, but, but who are you annoying along the way? You know, the other thing I want to speak to is brand. The thing about brand, brand is a one-way conversation. It's one-way communication. So companies have a brand right now, they're becoming irrelevant. But if you look in the book, in the relatable book, Be Relatable, I write about three companies, Patagonia, Starbucks, and Nike. Why? They created an origin story, which is very interesting. I talk about it in there. But what they did, in addition to their brand, they created community with their brand. This is before all this stuff we're talking about on digital marketing online. And this is why they're lasting, recognizable, sustaining brand. And probably the most famous of that, Mary, is Starbucks, which is, this is not your home. This is not your work. This is a third place. It is a place of community. And Howard Schultz says, we're going to do it with you know one person, one neighborhood, one cup of coffee at a time. That is a brand with community. That's why they're lasting. Absolutely. So we've been talking about a shift and it has already happened. And we're going from social chasing to interaction and community. These native digitals require interaction and community to live in this on online world. They they don't want a social chase. They don't want to do any of those uh, those hand claps and hearts and all those things. They're not as into that as uh, the native analogs are. So this shift has already happened. If you're here, you might want to listen to where it's headed and how you can maximize that your work in this new online world. Can I add one, just one quick thing, and we'll get to this. Yeah. You guys, if you talk to a lot of the native digitals and you ask them, hey, are you collecting emails? Most of them will say no. And they go, why would I collect emails? I have my community. Mm-hmm. So they say, well, what happens if your community goes away? Then I'll just shift them over and they'll come find me and I'll have my community. They yeah. don't care about email marketing and they think emails are are kind of worthless. Yeah. So again, we're all sitting there going, what? <laughs> Why could you not have emails, right? And yeah. an email list. But yeah. that's not how they think. And the reason they're not thinking that way is because they have found revenue and profit success with community and they find email marketing irrelevant. Absolutely. And that leads us to really who we are and our community, we are calling them heretics. We are calling ourselves heretics. And this is the heretics 2.0 versus the heretics 1.0, which Peter will talk about in a minute. But it really is our community for the contrarian thinkers, our peers, because we are not experts at being contrarian. We are participants along with you. All of our peers, we have a place to get together and look at these things in a different way and not just the way that's been the basically for millennia uh because the 2.0 has what in common with us peter well first of all say no to the quo that's our tagline (laughs) i love that one because you know being part of the status quo and and not thinking contrarian is going to get you in big trouble because it keeps you on the same hamster wheel you're on today and a lot of this stuff guys if you don't, if you've done email marketing, look at the last 15, 20 years. It was slaying at one time, and now it's like what 20% and one to two percent click-through rate. These this is the reason why. It's because these things are slowly dying. They're not working anymore because a majority of the population is shifting away. So heretics 1.0, if you think about that, the demarcation is really when the internet started in 1990. So when I talk about Heretics 1.0, and again, I, I'm just going to, tomorrow I'm going to put up an article about Heretics 2.0 in Substack. You can read about it. Heretics 1.0, you know, very famous people like Galileo that says, hey, the sun is at the center of our universe. And look what happened to him. He got persecuted. Uh, we got Copernicus was another one. Martin Luther King. You guys all know Martin Luther King? The civil rights movement. Everybody that's a heretic is a contrarian thinker. They think different, but for a cause, Right. So Martin Luther King, the famous speech, I have a dream. And that was, he was a heretic. I mean, the problem with previous heretics was sometimes they got persecuted. Sometimes they lost their life. And, you know, it's unfortunate that that happened with these these different heretics. Now, 2.0, these are all of us, again, that started from post-internet, okay? Now, as analogs, this is where we can get involved with the native digitals because it's not like a native digital club and you can never get into it. The only difference, you can get into the club, you just got to change this, change your thinking. 
So think contrarian. So these are people like I talk about Steve Jobs. I, I, I'm a big I admire that guy for what he did. I know I actually know some people that work directly for Steve Jobs and he was a hard ass. But the way he he was a visionary, he talked about category, category design with the iPhone when he held it up. He was a heretic. And he even we have a quote in the article. He talks about uh, innovation needs a few heretics to adopt it before the rest of the people find value in it in the world. This is why we're calling ourselves Heretics 2.0. That is our movement. That's our community that goes along with our relatable framework. Now, to get where the rubber hits the road in Heretics 2.0, guys, this is not just a bunch of fluffy fluff stuff. We are going to show you, here's how you build video relationships with relatable. Here's the framework, and we're going to give you use case by use case by use case. Whether you're a coach, a course creator, a product creator, an e-commerce company, a book author, you're going to see exactly how to use Relatable and create these interactive videos. Typically, a lot of times in 30 minutes or less, they're going to help you build not just these engagements, but more revenue at scale with your business. And that's what Heretics 2.0 is all about. Amen. So native digitals think native analog marketing is irrelevant. We already mentioned that about email, but also all the other parts of it, the stranger, the, the OTOs, the upsells and down, all that push marketing and all of the, uh, the filters that we analogs have brought to this uh, new digital world, the native digitals don't accept them. So with that in mind, we need to stop social chasing and be relatable because social chasers push their content on the native digitals at scale, but they're tired of it. They're tired of it. They reject it. They can smell these tactics a mile away. In order to be relatable and not just relate to the social, to the native digitals, but also to, to hopefully save those analogs who are just done with the way of doing business that has been forever. If you want to do that, you need to be relatable, be relatable to humans, offer viewers information and adventures, personalize the message and the movement and build interactions and community. Anything and else? One more thing I'll add to that, Mary. Guys, if you, and it's in the book too. I define, okay, so what does it mean to be relatable? It means all the things Mary just said, plus guys, if you what from the 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 uh, statistic I gave you, seventy percent seventy percent of people watching video they want to have an interaction with you as the business owner CEO. That means they want to interact with me. They don't want to interact with my company or my brand. They want to hear me. So being relatable means being authentic, being genuine, being vulnerable. Sometimes you have to look, we all have problems in business. Heck, I've had several businesses where sometimes it went good, sometimes it did not go good, right? We've all had that. In fact, anybody who has made success in business, if they haven't had any failures, and I'm not talking about these guys on the internet go, I was $10 million in debt and I was living in a wood pile and look at me now. You know, come on, you know, this is like you hear this all the time. I'm talking about being vulnerable, being real with people saying, look, I had a challenging day or we're having a challenging time here, but here's what I'm thinking and here's what else is possible. And I want to share this with you, the community. Let me know what you think, right? That's being relatable to your audience and to your customer base and taking that customer base and turning them into customer advocates. You know, Bear, I told you the story. I had a business one. It was a construction company. It was a large company. I had 70 some employees. Do you know that we had almost at one time over 300 customers that would drive to our, our office? They would come. Now, this is, you know, again, old school. They would come pick up brochures and pass it out to people that they knew. I did it other than, you know, I used send out cards because that's what we did back in the day. But they did it for free. Why? Because they believed in our product. They believed in our service and we treated them well. We treated them like human beings and I developed relationships with them. And this is something you can do at scale with your business in interaction and community and being relatable. Absolutely. So we talked about what it means to be relatable. What does it mean to have viewers that control their own experience? Now, those of you who know me and know the fact that I've done chat bots and email marketing and uh, marketing in general, I have always been uh, an advocate of viewers or um, the people 
going into my experiences, because that's the way I looked at them, and allowing those people to control their own adventure. So my my funnels were very branched. There would be a lot of questions. Which do you prefer? And I would let people go whichever way they went. I was never a one and done type of funnel builder. It was never a start with this, go to the end, sell, and just stay in that one framework. It was con- It was always branched. But what does it mean in Relatable to have people control their own adventures? What does that mean? Well, ah, goodness <laughs> gracious. We popped through the slides. Uh, I think we did. Oh, while you're going back to where we are. There we go. What it means basically is, you know, everybody, this goes back to the seventh, you know, un- unwavering truth, which is people want to have personalized and niche experiences. I don't care if you're a native analog or native digital. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not going to go and go to a, a Toyota dealership and go, well, there's only one kind of car you can buy here, and that's it. And it's in the color red, and you got to get that one, right? <laughs> we have preferences. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, right? So this is a basic human tenant. So when they're consuming content, they want to control their experience, not go through a funnel that you designed. They want to go their own direction. Now, do you have to develop those experiences for people? Yes, but it's not hard to do. And again, you know, we're talking about you're developing two, maybe three minute videos and giving them pieces of content, but letting them choose the course of the way they want to go. Here's a good example. Let's say you're a coach and you may do uh, an interactive video that does a, a survey diagnostic. You can do that in Relatable and ask them some questions like, well, tell me about this about yourself. Tell me about this. Once they get done engaging, then you're saying, okay, well, here's my recommendation and here's some different choices. Maybe it's four different buttons on different things that they would like to learn. It's a mini course. Now they get to choose and go, okay, based on how I answered, I have these four choices. I like choice number two. I want to go there and I want to learn about that. And by the way, relatable, when they're done, they can come right back and they can do choice one uh, one, and three if they want to. So the whole point is, they get to control their experience. They have their own video viewing adventure. Now, the reason why we did it this way is because if people can choose their own video adventure, they are many times more likely to stay engaged with your video content and not blast out in the first 10 to 30 seconds like they do on YouTube. Absolutely. What does it mean to personalize your message and create a movement? All right. So, Peter, I'm going to let you talk about this because really that's where people kind of disconnect. They disconnect a little bit from niche content and I need to talk about my niche and personalize to that person. But how does that relate to actually getting people into your community so that they can support and drive a movement? Well, you know, the, nowadays, I mean, if you look at the spectrum of this, we used to do, and I'm, you know, there's still companies that do it. In fact, my brother works for one of them. It's a global company. They do focus groups, right? And people come in and they talk about things, blah, blah, blah. And they ask them questions. And from that, they glean what they think are valuable facts. And then they take it to market. But I will tell you a dirty little secret about product development. More than eight out of 10 products fail. Part of the reason is because we're not getting good data at the front end, right? It's almost like artificial intelligence. You put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So the the whole idea of this movement, and again, we don't have all the answers. The reason being is because movements are timeless. Movements are, uh, they take on their own form and shape. Just because Mary and I are in the movement do not dictate that everything that goes on in the movement, we dictate it. That's not what a movement is. That's authoritarian. So the movements really, we want to get belly to belly. And the best way to do that with today's technology is you're in community with people. They're saying, hey, could I do this with this? Could Could I think about it this way? What else is possible here? Or I used it this way. I want to share this with the group. I used it this way. I want to share this with the group. So it's not always Mary and I. What's going to happen is we're going to come up with certain use cases. But I'm telling you, relatable is kind of like Excel. That's the way I look at it. You can develop your first relatable and get it out to market in under 30 minutes, but you're only using 1% of what you can actually do in relatable. And once you start discovering how you can customize and personalize a video viewing adventure and then re-engage them back in based on how they answer or how they touch what we call touchables, which are just little interactions on the screen, 
the sky's the limit. The only limit is your creativity. So you're going to come up with a whole bunch of use cases that Mary and I are going to go, wow, we never thought of that. <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? So, but that's the whole idea of the movement is we're in community together. We're, you know, look, way back in the day, guys, for some of you guys, this really dazed me, but I, when Guy Kawasaki was with Wozniak and Jobs, they had user groups, Apple user groups. I wrote a book called The Apple 2GS Guy, and I explained how computers work, floppages works, laser printers work, because we had the largest Apple user group in the country. I wrote a book before CRM was around called Customers for Keeps. And it was how do you take a person who's a prospect all the way to a strategic advisor in your company and how we did it with this Apple user group. And all of that stuff is just as relevant today as it was back in 1994 because it's timeless. You're dealing with human beings. You're dealing with relationships. You're dealing with community. And community, I don't care what kind of technology comes out, it will still be there. Absolutely. And that really comes into exactly what Peter just talked about. How? What does it mean to build interactive communities uh, and relationships? And he pretty much touched on that with the movement as well. But I think just to go that, that next step is to, again, think about the conversations you have, again, I'm a conversationalist, think about the conversations you have at every point in your interaction with your potential customers. And every single one of those interactions, are you just telling them about how great your brand is? Or are you inviting them to participate in what you think is important and asking them, do you also think this is important? And I'm going to do that right now because I know Claudia is here. And Claudia, if you're if you're cool, you can uh, unmute yourself and tell me what you think about what we're talking about. If you're not and you got noise in the background, no worries. But that's the whole point of this. How? What do you think about these things? It's not just us. We're heretics. We already know that. We know we're weird. It's just the way it is. We want other people like us to come in and have fun with what we're doing. And that's what relationships are about. And that's what community is about. One other thing, just to add to that, Mary, just go back yeah. to this slide real quick. So in the book that I wrote in Relatable, guys, just so you know, I go, there's a whole chapter on how do you build interactive relationships and community step by step from the time they're a prospect to get them to a lead, to nurture the lead into customer, to take that customer all the way through to an advocate. It, it, I give you a step by step approach on how to use Relatable Interactive Video to do that. And then we have a whole ton of examples. We have explainer videos, product videos, how-to videos. We show you exactly how to do everything in this where you're going, oh, yeah, I could use that. I could use that. I could use that. And you can build these things very quickly. Then you can do the daily relatables that we talked about where you're just having this conversation. It's a continual dialogue with your customer base and just asking them for input, right? You don't have to do a big Heretics 2.0 like we're doing unless you want to. You can have community right inside of Relatable. And that's a good way to do it too. Yeah, definitely. So how, what steps do you need to take to be Relatable? Well, we've been talking about interactivity. Number one, consistent with your content. That's something I can, I'm just going to be totally candid here. I struggle with that one. I just do. Um, I've got tools. We're using tools to help me be consistent and batch but consistency is still something that I'm working toward uh, being really, really good at. Build community, experiment. I think we're really good at that. <laughs> I'm, I, I try almost everything new, but I, I'm much more. Um, Mary, we're we're going to fail. And so are you yeah. out there. Yeah. Everybody's watching this. If, if you, if you say to me, I've never failed, well, you've never been in business. Yeah. We all fail. That's part of the experiment process. I don't have all the answers to this, but we're going to do it together in community. Yeah, absolutely. And then think movement. And the only thing I want to say about, because Peter's been talking about how you can, there's all kinds of use cases and you can build these things really quickly. There's two interactives that I've built. Uh, the first one was interactive uh, lead gener generation, interactive video lead generation. And it was actually a lead gen product. And I took people through uh, three steps and actually had them type in on the video, their answers to my questions. And then once they got to the end, I said, okay, now go check your emails because I took all of the answers that they gave me and I emailed it to them so that they had a record of what they came up with in this little mini course that took them no more than 10 minutes to create, to, to, uh, to finish. And then 
The other interactive was not as quick and not as simple. It was 36 different interviews for authors to a book. And it was the same kind of relatable, very user, excuse me, see what I did there? Very much viewer centered, viewer directed. And they went through an adventure with each of the authors to a book that was part of a community, actual community project. So yes, these are the steps to be relatable and you can do it quickly. You can do it simply with a lead magnet or a mini course, or you can be very complex and very, uh, uh, I guess the adventure is quite long winding road with 36 different videos. And each of those videos had uh, three, I believe, three or four different interactions with each video. So that was much more complex, but so much fun because it was very interactive, still is. Yeah. So anything more about these steps, Peter? Just the you know, one thing I'll, I'll point out is I'll tell you what, guys, we all know we've been there, right? We had the lead magnets with the PDF. They print the PDF out. They fill it out. They scan it. They send it back to you. Guess what? People are not going to do that anymore. But this is why this is another reason why relatable as a software tool, you get inexperience. Right in the experience, they're filling things out. So when they're done, they're done. They can walk away. They go, oh, and I get all my answers. It's here, right? That's powerful. That is engagement. And that gives them the result that they're looking for while they're in the experience. Because as soon as you get them out of the experience, you guys all know, they're gone. And they're <laughs> probably not going to come back. Yeah, exactly. Unless you give them more information to interact with. Yeah. All right. So... What we're trying to talk about here, and we've said this, Peter and I both, several times, we are continual students. We are not experts. We are not saying, because I really do believe once you become an expert, as uh, Peter's mentioned and we've read in many other books, once you become an expert, you can only be an expert on something that has already happened. You cannot be an expert about something that is either present or in the future. Think about all the experts that popped out of the woodwork when generative AI hit the hit the scene, when chat GPT hit the scene. Everyone decided they were an expert on prompts or how to use this new tool. Well, no one was a, an expert on how to use chat GPT in the first month, all right? So that's not expert status. That's a student who may be a little further ahead than some others, but you're not an expert. You are continually learning. And to us, to me at least, that's the most fun of all of this is to continually learn from the people in our community. What do you think? I agree. Totally. Let's move ahead. We got our uh, demo to show here in just a minute. So, which I'm excited. I like to, I always like to watch the demo. So. It's so fun. All right. So how relatable are you? So Claudia, if you want to chime in on this, please do. Um, do you agree with those seven undeniable truths we talked about before that everyone's on their phones and all of those things? Uh, do you agree that native digitals want interactivity and community? Do you also reject social chasing as we do? Are you growing a movement or are you just marketing stuff? And are you ready to be relatable with interactive video relationships? So if you have anything about, to say about that, please do. Yes, uh, I do. Can you hear go, me? Go for it, Claudia. Thank you. Yes. Uh, as I'm listening to both of you actually here, so I'm not really relatable <laughs> because you you are having conversation, but I'm not in it. But now I am, although we're not using relatable as a software. Mm -hmm. I can tell you by interacting with younger than me generation, which is really amazing to know that they're fed up with these funnels, so-called funnels, and they they are. I think younger generation will want to do this to stay to be different because like like you said everybody can be just talking on the youtube videos but give give your customers give your potential clients give them a chance to interact with you so you're building relationships and it's not one-sided and that's that's it that's the whole explanation you got it. In a nutshell, that's very true, Claudia, and thank you. I appreciate that. But you know, the thing about it is, I even think native analogs are waking up to this stuff too, because they're saying, you know, my email marketing isn't working as well as it did. The ad costs are going up. It's not like it used to be. 
there's, you know, SEO is, it's hard to get, you know, they're changed the algorithms. Google just changed it the other day. I was just reading an article on that. So, you know, I think a lot of people, doesn't matter what the age is, they're just saying enough's enough. We, we have to, there has to be a different way to do this. Absolutely. So how does this work? How, now we've talked about a framework and thank you, Claudia, for encapsulating it so well. Um, and again, please just chime in uh, because again, I'm trying to also create, watch the slides and make all this happen. So I don't, I'm not going to be offended if you talk over me. So Mary, how do you build? One, one thing, if you could share the link to the software, I would. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. It's really easy. Be relatable.app. Real simple, but I will share it with you. Definitely. Okay. Okay, um, all right. So how do you build your first relatable? Now, we do have something called smart scripts. So Peter mentioned about uh, AI. Uh, why don't you take us through that a little bit, Peter? Yeah, just real quick. It's like um, quick. You know, for a lot of people, for younger generation, Claudia, like you said, you know, they'll pick up their phone up. They'll do a video. They're very used to that. But for some of us people who are analogs, it's like, uh, what do I say? Right. We all <laughs> have had that. Right. So this is kind of like video with training wheels. We have artificial intelligence. You basically fill out a little form. Whatever you want to create for a script, it creates it for you. All automatic. It creates the questions. It plops it into the interactive. It scaffolds it. And then you can take it and you can edit it. You, you know, it has an editor. We have, uh, so it's it's really simple to, you know, just get an idea going instantaneously. And then once you get that script created, if you're going to use our AI component to do it, if you're going to write your own script, um, if you're still or in that space, the top of your head. Yeah. or just or just turn on your phone and start. The the beauty of of having the script there, I still even if I just use it as a, a kind of an outline so that I know what I'm going to talk about because I tend to go off topic. <laughs> so even if I have that outline, I can at least keep going and I can have that to follow. Uh, but even if you don't, if you know what you're going to talk about. One of the benefits of uh, the smart script, there's an automatic teleprompter. So you can change the, the speed at which that script presents itself right on your phone because everyone's going to look at it on their phone rather than landscape. And then you can just record your video. Yep. Then you upload your video. You can, up, you can use the platforms you're already using. YouTube, that's what I use. It's free. I can lit, make market as unlisted and I can just put as many videos up there as I want and then just put the link in Relatable so that I can then have that video represented in Relatable and then I can do, I can add my interactives on the video itself. Yeah, just to, just to add to that, Mary, yeah. uh, is we have the other one. So use Vimeo, use Wistia, use Cloudinary, use Vidyard for you people, you know, in the European Union things. We have them all. You can, wherever you host, I agree with Mary. It's like, and we, even in our product docs, we have all the tools you can use for free. Like Canva, you can create touchable images for free, all this stuff. But that's why YouTube is great because you can host it for free in there. And the thing about other, like other interactives, they charge by video minute views. We don't care. You can have a two minute video or a two hour video. We go by video views. And so really, it, to us, it does not matter if you have a two hour video and you have 5,000 video views or a two minute video and 5,000 video views. It's totally up to you. Were you going to say something, Claudia? No, I just said that everyone is on YouTube. I, I'm always like in my marketing, I'm always thinking about younger generation because they're going to they're taking over. OK, yeah. so it's going to be either TikTok or YouTube. That's it. Forget about it. Well, everything. and you know, Claudia, and I, you know, talk about this, and it's in my article, but Claudia, the thing about like, I'm a, I love TikTok. I'm a big TikToker. I also love YouTube because YouTube's a little different, right? TikTok is more of a scroll thing. YouTube is more of like a how to. How do I do this? How do I do yeah. that? Right. Yeah. But in any case, you can put up what we're doing is putting up videos. They don't necessarily have to be interactive, they could be passive watch. But then, like with TikTok, you say, hey, I got Linktree, which you can get for free. I want to take you over there. Go and take a look at my use case on this or this or this. They tap on it and it comes right into your interactive environment. Now they're with you in community. Yes. And so that's what we mean when we talk about building interactives. This this may be a new term and it, I'm sure it's a new term for people because we are looking at interactives as actual things not just being interactive as an esoteric idea. These are actual points in your video where you're asking people to interact with you. 
And that's what we mean by build your interactives. You're going to add a question. Like when I did my uh, lead magnet, there were three questions. So I talked on my video and then I stopped the video and asked a question. And then people actually typed in their answer. Then when they were done, the video continued. And then I stopped the next at the next point and asked them to interact. That's what we mean by interactives. Well, and the other thing, just to, to talk to add to that too, Mary, we have a what we call because our language, right? We call them touchables. So if you say, Claudia, you have service-based businesses, could be chiropractors, orthodontists, dentists, landscapers, any kind of trades, anybody that's in the service-based business. Um, you can have what's called touchables, which is once you get done with the interactivity of asking them questions, you could say, okay, uh, we'd love to, now we diagnosed, if you're doing a survey or whatever, we'd love to have you contact us. You could put an icon in there, text me, call me, set up an appointment. Like a coach, they could set up a calendar appointment to go in. These are all touchables. They're all on the screen. They're all interactive. And by the way, all the things that your viewer is going through, that is all tracked. And that all can be used for re-engagement to build relationships, depending on how they're going through your experience. Absolutely. And then there's where you were talking about re-engagement. So let's say you put a touchable on the screen that says, you know, hey, um, you just went through this lead magnet with me. You learned this thing. Now I would love to personalize this experience or have a chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. Click my uh, calendar link. You'll see the little calendar icon pop up. Click it and make an appointment with me. Well, the people who clicked that but didn't make the appointment, I can re-engage them. Or the people who didn't click it, I can also re-engage them and say, hey, did you finish this lead magnet? I really would love to chat with you if I can help. How, how did you have any issues with it? Did you have any trouble? You can enter, you can actually nurture them based on specifically what they touch in your video, not just our chat bot, which is all text-based, but actually on your video. They're interacting with you personally. Okay. Okay. But what happens if someone leaves in the middle of the video, then you better off capture some kind of you know, email yeah, well, they, or, so, or their yeah. phone number, because how else are you going to re-engage and bring them back to that video? So we have, when they come in, we do single sign-on. So they can use, do a two tap, like with their uh, Google. And okay. now you captured their credentials there. We do have a phone element and you could put that anywhere you want at any time code and say, hey, I'd like to capture because I'd like to build a relationship. I've got this next piece of content I want to send you to. And we'd like to, inter we typically interact with text and, and links, not email, because we know how emails get buried. So as long as you explain it to people and are, you know, upfront and honest with them, they're going to provide the email. And then that's where the time code technology comes in. Wherever they stop, Claudia, you can bring them right back to the time code where they stopped. And so in the text, you may say, hey, you know what? You stopped here. You missed the best part. I just was going to talk about this. If you want to find out you know, want to learn more about that, tap on the link, right? Because they're on their phone. And that's then brilliant. That's brilliant. That's the, that's it. And you can't that's do that with YouTube or TikTok, by the way. This is why <laughs> it's building interactive video relationships, not just passive video like Google or TikTok or interactive video, which is a one-way experience. We want people like you, Claudia, to build relationships and convert those relationships into customers and revenue at scale. No matter what you're selling, yeah. no matter what you're offering, you have a relationship with your customer. Yeah. So yes, let me uh, show you uh, if I can remember. Mary, how we're going to gonna go for quality. This is going to be quality. It is quality. Forget you, uh, about quantity. Yep. That's you, you hit it right there. That's exactly it. We don't want to just have numbers. That's the whole reason we don't talk about. We, yes, we want, we need to analyze things and make sure what we're doing is working, but we're not led just by numbers, just by a wallet, the number of wallets we can touch. We're led by the people we can interact with. All right. Let me show you what I mean. All right. So I'm going to bring up a Sorry, video I'm not here. sharing my video because like I'm laying in bed already. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's okay. Let me just uh, share this video here. If I can find it. And my computer will speed up a little bit. Sorry. There we go.
Okay, give it a second and uh, this video will pop up. Okay, does everybody see it? Yep. All right, let's go. Let her rip. nice yes yes and that went fast let me tell you uh <laughs> that's not uh that's not something you can uh just uh you know yeah. one two three um that fast but i i gotta tell you once you once you get into this process once you get into the relatable tool um it is so intuitive and i know you claudia i know how uh how I good you wanna- are if I was going to market this, I would create a video from scratch. Like I would be the one creating on the video on the fly. So people would actually understand yep. it, you know, yeah. and I would show that in video step and by you step. Could do them. Yep. And, and that's the way you market to your customers to convert them. That's, you know, what's, what's really cool about this is you can do that. Yeah. on the fly. We'd have to do this, even though like, I understand like for us, all the generation, it, it's not as like, it, it it's a learning curve it's another another tool that you have to kind of like grasp there's so many tools out there i'm sure younger ones they, they can get it faster so well but you know the thing is Claudia, Not- even with our age when you come in again that's a high level video and you know i didn't want to make it we didn't want to make it five or ten minutes but every if you remember in there the big green bubbles you tap on that anywhere there's a video tutorial that pops up and it's like a two two minute video explains exactly what you got to do in that screen so this is why it's it's really self-evident when you go in like on the home screen you tap in that big green bubbles it goes okay you're here 
Now let's look around. It shows you exactly what to do on that home screen. When you go into smart script or you go into manual script, you tap on the, bu the bubble and it has a tutorial video in there. It shows you exactly what to do. So you don't have to run over to product docs and try to figure things out. It's right there. It's in experience for you too as well. <clears throat> Absolutely. It's best to test it on the cell phone, on the phone device. It's best to, well, we yes. built this. We're the only ones in the world where you build and you view on your phone. And the reason why is, like I said, there's 8 billion people. 96% of people have a cell phone. Not all of them have a desktop or laptop. And the other thing is we want you to be able to build when creativity strikes, anytime, anywhere, where you don't have to go, well, I can't do it because I've got to go into my office when I'm back in my office and sit down. It's like, you might have something to hit you right away, but you go, I just want to do a relatable right now. <clears throat> and you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And that's the whole point of it. So when we talk about the power of this tool, it really is like Peter just talked about engagement with your audience on the fly, anytime, anywhere, because you can do it on your phone. You can upload a video to YouTube on your phone to, to have it unlisted. You can connect it into Relatable on your phone. You can drag your the, the uh, scrubber, you know, to the place you want and drop in a, an interactive right there and publish it and send it to your audience. Uh, it, it really is anytime, anywhere on the fly, which is, you know, there was another article I was just reading about uh, meme marketing, marketing today with the current um, topics that are, that are relevant to culture today. The only Shut way we can do that. <laughs> what, what's that? Chat GPT, I said. <laughs> yeah. So the only way we can do that is to actually be able to interact now when it's happening, not, um, you know, after we've gone to our studio, made it all perfect, sent it to our editor, got it all um, edited to be perfect, then put it up on. We can't wait for that anymore. We have to be relevant at the time that it happens and but relatable. Let me ask you one question about this. Yeah. Okay. When you're saying you can do it on the fly, how could you do it if? let's say you have that pop-up where, where they can decide with what way they're going to venture, like what way they're going to take A, B, or C. So then at the beginning of the video, everything is cool, but then based on how they answer, then you have to have three different videos. Okay. So let me answer that really quickly, because this is something I've done. One of the beauties of this, the thing I love the most, the most is that I can start a video and let's say I'm going to have this three topics, like my lead magnet. I did that all in one take. I went ahead and let myself mess up. I, if I didn't say something right, if it didn't come out right, I just stopped talking. I didn't stop recording. I just stopped talking. And then I started a next fresh version. You can do that so your video can be as long as you want, but you send people to different time codes in the video based on their interaction. And you don't have to have different videos. You can if you want, but you don't oh, have to have it. You can go okay. through the oh, whole yeah, script. Chapters. So you have the whole track, but yes. then you, you can just you can just bring them from that first question to a somewhere where they need to be. And by That's the right. way, Claudia, let's say the first 20 seconds, you're messing up, you're kind of getting the flow. You can even with your finger, grab the little red marker and go, I want to start here where I started when I was good. And then what Mary said, you could jump from chapter to chapter. So it's from perfect take to perfect take. No more video editor, no more video editing cost. It's this beautiful. is so awesome when you're watching videos and some people just want to talk so much. And it's like, oh my gosh, now I have to wait until they're finished. Like, <laughs> why don't they just ask me right at the beginning? Like, okay. Well, you know, the thing is, so Claudia, we thought of that too. So we have this little, because in interactive, you're inexperienced, right? Just like in life, you're inexperienced, right? But if the viewer goes, well, it's kind of getting boring, they can slide the slider to the end of that section of the video, answer the question and move on. Or if something like Mary's teaching something and you're listening and you're going, now there's a question you're going, oh, okay, that was a really good, but I didn't quite understand all of it. You can take the slider and slide it back to the previous uh, interactive and listen to it again and go, oh, now I understand what Mary's saying. And now you can answer the question, right? So you have the, as a viewer, you have the ability to control that part of your experience. Now, one other thing I want to add, Claudia, too, because I want everybody to hear this. This we invented in Openless and we carried it forward into Relatable. And that is 
let's say, Claudia, you're doing a piece of content and it's really good and people are liking it. We have this thing called viral share. The viewers watch it. You can even say, hey, if you like this content and you think this is something you want to share with your friends, there's a little share icon up at the top. Just go ahead and tap on that. Now, when they do that, they can share it up on social posts. They can share it through a text. They can share it through an email. They can share it through WhatsApp for our international customers. But let's say they share it through a text. That link goes into their, their phone contacts database, opens up. They have the link. They can compose the text. They choose who they want to send it to, and they send it out. And guess what that costs you? Zero. You could build your whole audience for free with viral share. <laughs> hey, hold on. Like, why does it cost zero? Because, because you're not using you're not using one of the SMS platforms like Twilio. You're actually going from your your viewer's phone to another viewer's phone, and you don't pay for them to text someone it's else. Phone plan. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. It's and not going through a Twilio or something like that. It's actually going from their phone to someone else's phone. And it's using their own phone plan. You don't pay for their phone plan. Makes sense. And here's the thing, Claudia, look at it this way, right? <laughs> Makes so sense. You, you know Mary really well. So yeah. if Mary sent you a video and said, hey, Claudia, you and I are friends. I want you to watch this. This is a really good piece of content. Tap on the link. What do you think you're going to do? Well, yeah, it's from Mary. I know Mary. I'm going to tap on it. I'll watch it. Yes. That's the whole beauty. No, it's true because we have relationship. relationship. This is why I'm here today on this video. Do you think that, you know, I have so many videos that I actually, I, I'm supposed to watch. Mary knows what I'm after nowadays. GHL to be an expert in go high level, actually. Be one of the best. <laughs> Just kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, like Mary, Mary and I, we, we chatted a little bit before. Um, and, and yeah. I actually, I was. I was looking at this software a while ago, but then I got distracted. So now I'm back to it. And I, <laughs> I really want to know, I want to go in and I want to see how that works. And I want to do it from my, from my device, really yes. seriously. Yes. So, yes. And you can, and this is, so this to continue with this, when we, when he talked about uh, grow your audience virally for free, now you understand what that means. Yes. We're talking about first mover status. We want, and I know you're a heretic. I already know it. <laughs> So we want first mover status because we are, we are, we want to participate in this tipping point. We want not get ahead of it. We want to participate in it. And we want to build sustainable revenue that comes from relationships, not just pushing people through funnels and looking at them as wallets. Um, that's what the benefits are. That's what we're doing. So this is this is how Relatable works. You asked for the link here a second ago. So this is what we're doing. We're talking about a seven-day free trial. And again, I guarantee you, if you figure out your script, you record it on your phone, you could easily build one of these in 30 minutes or less. You easily. Build it and share what you want. We're not going to tell you what you can and can't do except what's um, dictated by law, <laughs> obviously. And we want people to come and hang out with us and figure out how this works together. Again, all of us learn about it together. We are, it's after the seven day free trial, it's 97 a month for only the first 50 people who join this. After that, it will go up. This is no FOMO. This is no false scarcity. There's nothing like that. Once we hit 50, the price will go up. We have not decided exactly to what. It's not going to go up by just 10 bucks. I can tell you that. <laughs> But uh, 97 a month, and that is for a lifetime. Um, that's the offer. That's exactly how Relatable works. And here is the link, berelatable.app. So anything else we want to add to that? I had a link uh, to test this a while ago, Mary, when you yeah. sent it to me. And I got a code how to get in, and I was playing with it just a little bit enough to be distracted again so i never got to it to actually test it which must have been like last year maybe the end of mm -hmm. this year last yeah. year and so i 
haven't had a chance really to. That's okay. I'll send you, I can definitely send you another one of the two, either one of those two relatables that I have built and you can see what it looks like. Again, once you start that seven day. So here's another thing, Claudia, I've just got to tell you, we have a VIP program where you get uh, one-on-one uh, and of course you and I can chat anytime, but we have one-on-one with Peter and I to take your use case. And I know what you're working on with GHL and your SaaS and the task bots and all of that to take that use case for SaaS. That's something we haven't really talked a lot about yet, Peter, is how you can use Relatable for a SaaS, how you can take that and to join the VIPs for $1, you can make an appointment with us. We can go through your use case and show you step-by-step how you can be relatable, not just in the tool, but in your mind, in your mindset. That's what you and I were talking about earlier today. You, yeah. you, can, any, you can sell anything you want, but if you were not relatable in the way you communicate it to your audience, you're just going to be lumped in with all the other people doing whatever kind of SaaS they're trying to sell. Yeah. So, And by the way, Claudia, because uh, we're SaaS, <laughs> I wrote a, there's a, there's a few pages in the book, Be Relatable, exactly how to do it as a SaaS company. I show you step by step by step because we're doing the same thing. In fact, Mary's right now building out our evergreen relatable experience. It's the same exact thing you would do. And you're just doing some, it's like almost like unboxing UGC unboxing and having de- the product demo and the different things you go through and let people view that experience and explore it as they want to not as the way you're going to force them into. Yes. Awesome. All this right. Is, this product, uh, I, Mary, I don't know if you share this yet with Peter, uh, how this could be, this could blow up actually by offering it as a, well, you don't want to hear that word upsell, I heard, you, but it's not an upsell. It's a product. It's your wide label solutions, you know, together with all these people, these, these businesses that they looking to be different. They they want service. They're a local business. And they have so many offers from different uh, GHL gurus, right? Mm-hmm. They all have their own. Nobody yeah. has this. No, 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 they don't. And that's why that's why I brought up service based businesses. Now, the other thing, too, if you deal with a larger company, like, say, a franchisor, you can create interactive properties for them because I used to be in two franchises. So I know exactly how they work. But with with Relatable, you create things that support their brand and their content. And the, you work with a franchisor. And let's say they have a couple hundred franchisees. With one button click in a millisecond, you can clone the whole thing for that particular franchisee in that geographical region. And that way, the, the corporate or divisions or franchisor, they control the interactive content and it can be replicated instantaneously for every single franchisee. That is wonderful, Peter. So, and and you're able to make, make the app wide labeled as well, or is, how, would, how would that work? So what, Peter, what she's talking about is agency work. So let's say I'm an agency and I want to uh, use Be Relatable to actually resell this product. And I want to have, uh, I want to build some of these flows, uh, the inter- the interactives for my agency customers. So I'm going to go after dentists. And I want to say, hey, I've got this new tool that you can use to be relatable to your clientele, to your audience. All you need to do is get me the videos and I can upload them and do all of that. So yes, you can as an agency. Put their brand on it. And the other thing too that we have, Claudia, is we have, so you, you've heard of like Bitly and Pretty Link, right? Yes. Okay. So we have what's called Alias. In Alias, you can have a specific uh, subdomain for each particular type of customer in there that white labels it to them, to their company as well. <laughs> and when you use it, just like Bitly, it can only be used once. And then if you try to use it, somebody else has taken it, they'll say, you can't do it. It's already been taken. Okay. So it's unique. <laughs> yeah. But you could, as an agency, you could go out and actually sell Be Relatable as a tool that you are going to implement for clients. And as you can see, just like any other SaaS, we're not talking about 
you know, you don't have to sell it for five thousand dollars <laughs> uh, as a service or ten thousand dollars unless you want to, unless you're going to add other things to it, like your GHL, like your uh, uh, you, you know, all the other tools, task bots, all those things. If you're going to lump those things together, then yes, you have a higher uh, selling point. But if you're just going to go sell relatable and you're going to say, hey, I can help your company be relatable. You use the terminology that we're talking about. You use that that whole contrarian thinking and you can help them set up a relatable business, a relatable relationship generator from the question, this tool. My question was, these people that I would get as customers, would they know that this is actual app? It's called relatable because how else? Like it's not going to be wide labeled under my brand. It's going to be relatable. So in well, other words, yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is, or or I could sell it as relatable. That's fine, and get my affiliate commission maybe for it. That's how. I Go high level. Everything is based on these commissions. So I don't care. You know, well, we like have, I think- yeah, we have both. I'm putting together an affiliate program, but Claudia, you know as well as I do in agencies, even if they knew it was relatable, they want it done for them. They're not going to sit there and try to figure this out. That's why they're hiring you and going, just set this up for me, manage it for me. Right. And at 97 bucks a month, you tack on a few hundred on that, it's still very affordable for them. Or you could do the franchisor approach and say, look, I'll offer it here for you as a franchisor. Here's your basic fee. And then every other one is paying this particular fee. It's, you know, whatever you mark up over 97, but you replicate it throughout the whole franchise industry or the whole franchisor, right? And you're talking about, Peter, sorry to interrupt you. You're talking about setup, which means like just to what's involved in a setup like i you're building like 97 dollars i'm not going to be creating their videos no 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 they would give you the content but you're going to you're going to create the interactives and then you're going to manage it for them and you charge them your monthly fee to do that right just like any agency would and then it's customized the branding so when we say setup this process is is uh relatable setup perfectly where you start with, okay, what do you look, what kind of video are you going to put in here? What is your branding? It'll look like you change the colors, you put your logo, you, you change everything to fit your branding. And so if you're going to do this for a client, you do it to fit their branding with their name and their company logo. And then you set up, they give you the video, you put it up on their YouTube, or you tell them to put it on their YouTube and list it as unlisted, give you the link. You just, you don't even have to touch the videos. You just take the link of the video, put it in relatable, add the, the interaction is at the points where you know they need to interact, set up the web hooks to send them the email reminders or the SMS reminders to bring people back to re-engage and nurture and set up the viral share where they can actually say, hey, share this content with someone you know. I'm a chiropractor. Someone else who has neck pain, share this with someone you know that has neck pain. And they, and you have the whole thing set up. Okay. And this all could be actually template. We could create templates. That's yeah. the point. Like, well, not only that, Claudia, but if you're going out prospecting for clients, you can go in and use your relatable tool, your license to create these AI scripts on the fly and go, hey, I want to share this with your business. This is a script you can use and here's some built-in questions. And then if you like it, we can create it into an interactive video. So you're, you're basically within a matter of probably 30 seconds or less, you've created their whole interactive video script. They don't know how you did it, but you did it and it's pertinent to their business. So you could, what, and I think, I think, let me verify this with Peter, but I think what he's talking about is you could go and let's say you're prospecting and you're going to contact a particular business and you see that they already have videos up on YouTube or TikTok or whatever. You can take that video and say, Hey, you know what, Mr. So-and-so, Ms. So-and-so, I see you're doing this. How, what would it, how do you think your uh, relationships and your revenue would skyrocket if you turned this video into an interactive video like this? And you showed them where the questions could be and what could happen. Let me know if you're interested. I would do that obviously sparingly only with companies you feel you can trust because then yes, they're going to take that and go somewhere else or someone else. I've had that happen <laughs> and try and do something else with it. But if you're starting a relationship with this company or this owner of this company, you can do that and create a relatable showing them what's possible. Or you can do what we're doing, which is if you have a particular niche you're going to go after, create an evergreen relatable. 
Yeah. And then you're just showing the same interactive video to each person, each business in that niche saying, imagine what this would look like, but personalized to your business, right? Yeah, like I, that's what I meant, templates. Yes, and that's a template. Tell, we would call them templates. Yes. And then they would basically get really hot with having that in that bonus to be a, oh, sign up under my agency because I want to use, you're going to be using this tool that comes with it, whatever. They see the template. And after that, you know, we explain to them, you know, monthly costs and what can be done, like, you know, customized. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and for you, knowing what I know about your business, you would be able to look at this and use your own re interactives, your own relatable videos and say, here, here are the things. And you ask a question. You Basically, it's a video survey, right? You ask, okay, do you already have a funnel built for your business? Yes or no. Do you already have an email automation? Yes or no. Do you already have an SMS automation? Yes or no. Do you already have lead generation on autopilot for task how much, Yes or no. How much do all these, all these things yes. cost you per month? Yes. I yeah. And you could personalize it. So Claudia, you could get it personalized so that yes, they have a funnel. No, they don't have lead generation on autopilot. No, they don't have email automation. And you could specifically I'm doing it them tonight. I'm doing it tomorrow because <laughs> I want to be the one, the first one in the, in that community, which is kind of, I'm a late going into it, but I'm going to have a better funnel than any, anyone else. Well, yeah, the Absolutely. way you were talking about before that was our beta group. We're in production now. So it's a totally different um situation the thing is yeah you could be the one of the first heretics in the community and you know you could build these these templates like you talk about and the thing is because they're really easy to build once you get the hang of this and it won't take you like more than a day yeah. you could go wow i could go after like a whole bunch of these niches Peter, like these selling snapshots of every local business imagine i have these snap snapshots regular funnels yeah. All I need to do is like just. By the way, Mar Mary's doing that right now. She was talking about that's the one of the evergreen use cases is the whole survey diagnosis type thing. So you're asking a bunch of questions, and based on that, you're going okay. Now, based on how you answered, here's some content for you that is specific to your your situation, how you answered, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's chat. Uh, I know we're gonna we're gonna probably talk tomorrow, Claudia. So I I. Again, I'll, however you uh, need help with this. I would love. <laughs> yep, let's do it. All right. Thank you, dear, so much for joining. Thank you to anyone listening. Thanks, everybody else is listening yes. out there. We, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have another. You want to tell them what the, when the next discussion is, so they can yes. jump in. Yes. So as you can see, Claudia, we want these to be live discussions, not just us preaching. <laughs> so we're glad you uh, came in and asked questions. <laughs> yes. So the next one is going to be October 11th at 9 a.m. Pacific, and it'll be the same Zoom link. So if you want to go to berelatable.app slash discussion, you can sign up there to join the discussion. And we are going to have these every two weeks because people like you come in and give us different feedback, different ideas, interact with what we're talking about differently. And that's what it's all about. So thank you, dear. <laughs> all right. I, I thank you. I wish that this video itself was relatable a little bit. You should have put those <laughs> things in there. <laughs> As Guess what? Mary. Mary's Guess working what? on that. Yep. Guess what? The last one we had already is a relatable. I send it to you, and this one will also become a relatable. So, yep, okay. they are already. I'll send you the previous one as a relatable so you can see how it works. I love it. See, we had interactions, and now I got to know Peter. The brain behind this and like I am being relatable and I'm making relationship. There Absolutely. you go. That's exactly right. And that's why we want to love, you know, I know Mary knows you, but I'd love to learn about your business. There's all kinds of, you know, I, every day I get different ideas like, man, we could use it this way. We could use it this way. And I, I created this thing. That's what's exciting about it is I'm really interested to learn how you're going to use this. And some of the ideas, that's why Heretics 2.0 exists, so you can communicate to us. And as the community grows, go, hey, this is, I want to show you guys an interactive I did. This is how I'm using it. Because when you share, right, everybody's a student, everybody's a teacher. They learn from you, you learn from them. We all learn from you. And so that's where it's valuable, I think. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see you next time. Thank Ciao. Bye-bye.